It's Andre from the High Performance Academy and we're here at World Time Attack with Darren from Bullet Race Engineering. Now, Bullet Race Engineering are well known for producing some of the most exquisite billet alloy blocks that you've seen for quite a wide range of applications at the moment. What we're going to be talking about is some of the features on their Mitsubishi 4G63 block. Now, Darren, this is here is a product that I've been following for a number of years. Uh, I've had a lot of my own experience with our own drag 4G63 and the problems of working with a standard cast iron block. Now, one of the biggest problems I had with my engine was holding the cylinder head down when we were running 50, 55 pound of boost. Now, guys at the pointy end of 4G63 drag racing these days are uh, probably well over 80 pounds. What features are you using with a billet block that allow the cylinder head to be held down more reliably? Uh, well, first of all, what we do is we use a dry sleeve system. So that allows us to uh, make the block with a Siamese bore, which means that the bores are joined together in the middle and the water does not run through the bores. It only runs along the sides. And also that allows us to have the fastening point where the head stud goes in and the deck and uh, the top of the sleeve as a one piece where so there's no way for it to move or it makes it very difficult for it to move so it holds the head gasket um, also what we do is we have um, like uh, the deck is three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters thick now, let's just talk about that because that, that's one area that I, I guess a lot of people would probably assume that a factory cast iron block it's nice and stiff and strong but when you're sort of starting to get up to 11, 1200 horsepower that deck surface of the factory block is starting to move around? Yeah so a lot of people that you hear people talking about that the head gasket fails or the engines failed because the head has lifted um, that's not actually what's happening. What's happening is that the surface of the head and the surface of the deck are not remaining flat. So the, the head doesn't actually come away from the deck where the fastener is. It comes away, it, you always see that a head gasket will usually blow at the midpoint between the fasteners because that's the furthest point from where it's being held down. So by increasing the deck thickness, that gives us more rigidity on the block, which means that you have to get to a higher uh, output or a higher horsepower per cylinder before the head gasket's going to fail. Uh, just to go back, how, how thick did you say the deck surface is on your billet block? So the, de the thickness of the aluminium is 19 millimetres in most cases. And how would that compare to uh, a factory 4G63, for example? Uh, the cast iron is around 8 millimetres. Now that's a substantial difference, clearly. Now, I know that uh, even with a factory cast iron block, a, a really common upgrade would be to move, first of all, to a superior fastener, uh, just a stud kit, and then obviously the next step is to move to a larger diameter stud kit to improve that clamp. Now, that still doesn't always work, though, does it? No, what we've found is that once they are approaching 60 and 70 PSI, especially on a 4G63, They'll pull the head down and um, then uh, once they pull the engine apart to inspect, you'll actually find that where the cylinders are is lower than the, where all the fastener points are. So it's actually pulled the metal up where, it's, where the fastener is and so it's still not really clamping this, uh, the head gasket uh, as well as it should. I just want to talk, this is probably more related to drag applications where we're running on a methanol fuel, very short runs where it's quite common to solid fill the, the block with a grout or solid filling compound to gain a little bit of strength and we've got no water there. Uh, you offer the option of running a, a complete dry deck surface but still retaining water in the block. Can you tell me how that works and why that's an advantage? Uh, well, we... Uh there are some racers have asked for us to do it this way because that allows them to run cooling in the block but without the water uh, running through the deck and into the head and so they run two separate systems one in the block and one in the head and then they they plug the holes in the cylinder head and then we just machine the block so there's no uh, coolant channels going through the deck um, and they, they want to do that because they think that um, by running the water in the block it may keep it a little bit cooler during the pass and it may uh, limit uh, when the detonation point might hit 
I mean, the guys these days are at 95 to 100 PSI. And, um, you know, so once you get up to those levels, um, it makes a big difference. Uh, some of those things can make a big difference, you know. Now, I just want to touch on the advantages, though, of not having that water transferring through the, uh, the, the block into the, the cylinder head. Uh, there can be some problems with water going through that. If the head does still lift or we, we have a head gasket failure, uh, that water can be quite, um, do quite a, a dramatic amount of damage to the block. Can you tell me how, the, how that works, the mechanics of that situation? Well, what, what it looks like, it looks like someone's taken to the, the top of the block with a blowtorch. And the reason for that is that uh, when you have the pressures so high, cylinder pressures are so high, you've got so much fuel pouring in, uh, once, the, once that uh, gasket fails, uh, the flame front, when it hits the water, the water vaporises, which has oxygen in it, and it, it just, you know, it basically turns it into an oxy torch. So removing that water, the ability for that to happen, even if we have a head gasket failure, it means that you're not going to lose the, the cylinder head and the block. Yeah, I mean, it limits the damage. I mean, the guys now are running um, the uh, copper alloy O-rings, when they're in those applications where they have uh, so much boost that, and, and they go to a billet head as well because the, the surface of the head was no longer stable enough, a factory head to hold the head gasket as well. But, you know, they're the extreme cases. In, in the water block uh, or like the street or circuit block, at this stage we don't know where the failure point is, but we have uh, tested to 300 horsepower per cylinder and uh, the head gasket is fine without an O-ring. Now, let's talk about the the uh, underside of the block and again in my own experience running to 1100 plus wheel horsepower and uh, 10 and a half, 11,000 RPM. One of the problems while I never saw a failure from it was every time we pulled that engine down for a freshen up you could see that the girdle or cradle that holds the main bearings you could see fret marks where that attaches to the block and again that sort of indicates that the whole thing's moving around. I can imagine that if we move from 1100 to perhaps 14, 15, 1600 horsepower, it's only going to get worse. How have you dealt with that situation? Okay, so what we do is we split the block at the crank centre line rather than having uh, like the wings coming down the side and having a cradle in the middle. Um, so we have a one piece cradle and we have added uh, extra fasteners. So we've increased the size of the fasteners. So I think in, in a lot of cases, a factory block might have a 10 millimeter fastener. We've gone to a 716, which is 11.1. Um, and then we've added uh, extra fasteners on each saddle through the middle. So we have a four bolt main. And then we've added uh, eight millimeter solid dowel on either side of uh, each bearing journal. And it uh, basically it stops uh, the uh, the cradle moving, or and the extra clamping force stops it separating. The fretting isn't only moving; it's actually the the cradle can separate a little bit too. Now you've you've also when you've got such a solid bottom end and everything so tightly held together, that can be a little challenging for the engine builder to actually pull it all apart when it comes time to freshen it up or assemble the engine. So you've got a unique way of dealing with that in terms of removing that bottom half of the block. How's that all work? Can you talk us through it? Uh, above uh, the dowels on the front and rear of each uh, main journal, we have a uh, M6 hole and uh, we just supply a long M6 set screw which you can uh, wind down on top of the dowel which allows you to just uh, lift the cradle off the dowels without having to use a, a mallet and also it doesn't damage the block because you're, you're winding down on top of the hardened steel dowel. Now in terms of all of those features, what you've done with these blocks, uh, what's the sort of ultimate power level that people are, are seeing with these in drag applications right now? Can you give me some idea? Uh, well, reports back from our clients, um, we have a client that ran a, a 657 at 223 mile an hour. Um, now he's at around 95 pounds of boost. I think they have uh, reached 100 pounds of boost in testing. Um, and so at the time that was the world record for a four cylinder door car. Um, so the estimate on that based on the weight of the car is he's making 1900 horsepower at about 11,000 RPM. Do you envisage an actual limit for what you think the block's capable of? 
Uh, I only, when I designed the blocks, I rated them at 1,700, and they've already exceeded that. But um, I'm sure they will find the limit. Hey, look, it's a really exciting product. I certainly wish that it was available back when I was racing. I might still be out there. Hopefully, I would have got into the sevens. But uh, if people want to get hold of you, uh, get buy your product, how should they get get hold of you? How can they find you? Uh, they can find us on Facebook at uh, Bullet Cylinder Heads or our website, or they can. Um, we're located in Adelaide in South Australia, or they can uh, contact us by phone. Look, thanks for taking the time to go over that block. Really appreciate it, Darren. Thank you.